We were originally twin sisters. Why are you the lofty queen, while well, I can only become a lowly footmaid? Speak, Eli gripped my wrist without restraint, I just want to hear it from you. Unable to discern whether the wrist about to be broken hurt more than my heart, I lifted my face and held back tears, what does your majesty want to hear? My feelings are clear, your highness should be well aware. He chuckled, his gaze suddenly sharp, deceiver. A footmaid dares to talk sincerely with me? The last strand of hope was crushed, and my face turned ashen, head hanging lifelessly. No one believed that the first time I saw Eli, my heart stirred. Outside the hall of diligence in government, a eunuch bowed, respectfully inviting the queen inside. I calmed my mind and stepped into the hall. Behind the beaded curtain, shadows lingered, and a tall figure in bright yellow stood against the light. I bowed my head, kneeling, your majesty's favor allows me to return home and visit my family. I am grateful and have come to express my thanks. This was my first time entering the imperial palace. As I was about to kneel, a pair of well-defined hands held my wrists, Ariana, no need for excessive courtesy, rise. With a slight force on my wrist, I lifted my head, and Eli's face appeared before my eyes. I had never seen such a handsome man. Sword-like eyebrows, long and narrow eyes as dark as ink, a silent smile played on his lips, though the smile didn't reach his eyes. Thank, thank you, your majesty. Eli withdrew his hand subtly, turned, and sat down. Is your grandmother's health improving? He lifted the cup lid, and mist mixed with the fragrance of tea overflowed as he took a sip, displaying a perfect elegance. Seeing me silent, he raised an eyebrow, hmm? Before coming, Skylar had reminded me to speak less, and if faced with unfamiliar questions, just smile. So, I raised my lips high, locking eyes with him, smiling without a word. In the haste of returning to the palace yesterday, there was no clear explanation at home. I wondered if my grandmother should continue pretending to be ill? Eli paused slightly, showing concern, is it serious? Should I have Imperial Physician Zhang take a look? No need, no need, I hastily waved my hand, there's no need. But is there a hidden issue? Eli raised an eyebrow, and the teacup landed with a soft thud on the table. Or is the queen hiding something from me? My heart panicked, your majesty, please forgive me. It's a woman's ailment on my grandmother, inconvenient to discuss with your majesty. The elders at home have already arranged everything. Please don't trouble yourself. May my grandmother understand my indiscreet words. Eli's handsome face froze, a light cough, and the teacup landed back on the table, as long as there's nothing wrong at the in-law's house. I nervously laughed in response. Today, the queen seems a bit different, he squinted his eyes, unabashedly scanning my face. My confidence soared, and I stammered, perhaps it's the strong sunlight, making me a bit darker. Saying that, I uncomfortably touched my face, lowering my head even further. In a trance, it seemed like a muffled laughter echoed from the opposite side. Whether it was an illusion or not, a hint of interest flashed in Eli's eyes as he scrutinized me, lowly chuckling, truly amusing. At this moment, a court lady announced the arrival of concubine Yao for an audience. I breathed a sigh of relief and quickly took my leave. Just as I was about to step out of the hall door, a clear male voice slowly echoed, like high-quality jade gently striking my eardrums. Queen. I turned my head in response, only to see Eli with both hands behind his back, half of his face hidden in the shadows. But it's been six days since you left. Why does it feel like the queen has changed like she's got a new core? I stumbled beneath my feet. In an instant, my body went limp, collapsing to the ground. When I opened my eyes, the outside was shrouded in a deep ink color. Inside, only a single candle flickered, illuminating a small space. Luckily, I wasn't waking up in a prison cell. I breathed out a sigh of relief, murmuring, quite a close call. Why would the queen say such a thing? A dark figure moved by the bedside, and handsome features suddenly appeared in the dim light. A tingling sensation ran through my scalp, my brief exclamation got stuck in my throat. I hadn't noticed someone by the bed just now. The physician said you fainted due to emotional agitation, Eli said as he helped me up, leaning against the soft pillows. Do you feel better now? His voice was low and tender, his words caring, and his long, narrow eyes were full of affection. Although this affection seemed a bit staged, like a performance on a stage, my heart couldn't help but skip a beat. The night is late, your majesty. Shouldn't you go back to rest? The queen doesn't want me to stay? Eli raised an eyebrow, I will stay in the Phoenix Perch Palace today. I felt struck by lightning, and before I could react, Eli lifted the blanket, pulling me into his embrace. 
In the past 18 years, I had never been this close to any man, especially when that warm and humid breath nestled against my neck, making my whole body stiff as stone. Eli showed no restraint, and as his breath circulated, his voice became low and husky, Queen, I can't sleep. My mind went blank, then shall I tell you a bedtime story? The person beside me suddenly paused and then buried his face in my shoulder, laughing softly, you can tell stories? How did I not discover that the queen is so interesting? Did I say something wrong? I felt uneasy. No, you didn't, Eli raised his head, his phoenix eyes sparkling with a lingering smile, tell a story. I want to hear. I grew up as a prince, unlike other brothers who had their mothers to put them to sleep. No one would tell me stories. Just as I had no mother by my side, there was someone who would tell me stories to lull me to sleep. In an instant, my heart softened like warm water, and my palm couldn't help but trespass, gently stroking his back. Would your majesty like to hear the difference between escorting goods from outside the Great Wall and within the capital? I never knew my voice could be so gentle. I narrated, sharing interesting anecdotes I had collected. Eli quietly nestled in my neck, his arms tightly around me, like a child without a sense of security. Those black eyes that I fell into at first glance, I didn't know when, had shed the falsehood, revealing a tender warmth. Overnight, the wind in the palace changed dramatically. The Phoenix Perch Palace became a highly sought-after attraction. The queen, who had been sitting on the cold bench, suddenly gained the emperor's favor. Eli, apart from the Hall of Diligence, spent most of his time in the Phoenix Perch Palace and never summoned other concubines. He came almost every day, either for a chat or to paint. He showed great interest in the customs and culture I spoke about from different regions, asking me to draw them. Although my drawing skills were poor, he couldn't help but mock me. I stubbornly refused to draw, and he came to coax me. In the end, he personally taught me, hands-on. As time passed, I found that he wasn't as cunning and scheming as my family had described. Being with him, I felt more at ease than at home. Concentrate when drawing, Eli tapped my forehead with the brush, glancing down with a faint smile. I shrugged my shoulders, bowing my head. I didn't want him to hear the sound of my heart almost leaping out of my chest. Your Majesty, Qing Le Pavilion was in turmoil until midnight yesterday. It said that concubine Qing sent several batches of people to invite, but the emperor didn't go. Skylar was combing my hair skillfully. She was a clever maid who came with the dowry from the Zachary household to the imperial palace. I gazed at the woman in the mirror, with skin as fair as snow and features like a painting. Suddenly, I felt somewhat distant, but after a year of pampering in the palace, my appearance had changed significantly from before. Your Majesty, are you listening? Skylar had already stopped. What did you say just now? The servant said that in the Emperor's heart, there is only Your Majesty. He stayed up late last night reviewing documents and even came to the Phoenix Perch Palace to see Your Majesty. Thinking about last night, my cheeks felt a bit warm. Why did concubine Yao cause a scene? Why else? During this year's hunting, the emperor only took your majesty. Naturally, she had to make a scene. At the mention of hunting, a trace of sorrow crept between my eyebrows. Royal hunting was an old custom. The imperial concubines had to accompany the emperor on the hunt. Skylar assumed I didn't want to participate and was being compared to concubine Yao, who had previously won praise for her archery skills. Don't worry, your majesty. The emperor will protect you. I sighed inwardly. If only she knew. Pretending is much harder than actually not knowing. The drumbeat started, resonating through the vast sky. Eli tightly held my hand, walking towards the spirited horses that had been waiting in the hunting grounds. When you're afraid, just call for Eli. He helped me onto the horse, teasing me in a low voice by my ear. My face turned red, and I clumsily pulled the reins, urging the horse forward. Eli burst into laughter, tightened his hold on the horse's flanks, and chased after me. Almost the moment we entered the dense forest, I keenly sensed that something was wrong. Eli, what's wrong? Afraid? Eli approached with a smile. Yes, I'm afraid. Let's get closer. I feigned timidity, but my eyes were vigilantly scanning the surroundings. In the blink of an eye, a sharp sound of breaking wind echoed, heading straight towards Eli. Perhaps it was instinct or subconsciously not wanting him to get hurt. I forgot my disguised identity. Before my brain could react, my body had already acted. I lunged towards Eli and reached out to catch the hidden weapon. After ensuring Eli landed safely, I belatedly realized the unusual silence around us. I didn't know the queen had such good skills. Eli's voice rang out in the cold wind, sounding particularly icy. 
I stood there in a daze. The palm of my hand, grazed by the swiftly passing arrow, tingled with a myriad of stinging sensations. I had no idea how to explain the current situation. I remember, Ariana, you have always been frail. Don't mention martial arts. If you take a few extra steps, your family would have to prepare a sedan for you. Eli. I swallowed dryly, my throat feeling parched. Lifting my head, I saw him speaking and smiling, showing no signs of anger. He said to me, Ariana, tell the truth, and I will pardon you. I clenched my teeth, averted my gaze, refusing to meet his eyes. Eli's expression gradually darkened. He raised his hand, lightly beckoning, and a circle of guards silently surrounded us. Report to your majesty, a few days ago in Guangling, we found a woman resembling the queen. However, she was abducted by Dylan's men on the way back to the capital. In an instant, my face turned as pale as paper, and my body swayed as if about to collapse. Your majesty, you still have a chance to confess. Eli had walked up to me, looking down from a higher position, his eyes disdainful. Trembling, I asked, did you suspect me all along? He chuckled without much emotion, a year ago, when you returned to the palace from your family visit, I felt that something was off. Your personality and temper seemed to have changed, but you also won my heart. Although I had doubts, I didn't think much of it. Little did I expect your family to be so audacious. Eli squinted, daring to deceive me right under my nose. Now that the witnesses are gone, and I have no evidence, Dylan will surely concoct excuses. Today, if you're willing to speak the whole truth, point out the mastermind, regardless of your family's fate, you will still be my queen. Is the truth important? I stared at him, gambling in my heart, more important than a living person like me? More important than what you see and feel day and night? A fleeting struggle appeared in the depths of Eli's eyes, gone in an instant. When he looked up again, he was like a tranquil ancient well, showing no trace of the past affection. Ariana, all you need to do is point out Dylan in the court, testify about the switch of the queens. I guarantee the lives of your family, and you will forever be my queen. No one can shake that, and we can continue our love as before. I closed my eyes, slowly parted my lips, and uttered. I have nothing to say. When Zachary came knocking on the door, I was squatting behind the escort agency's hall, washing my foster mother Olivia's feet. Ariana, stand up. A displeased voice came from behind me. I turned my face and saw a middle-aged man with a well-groomed beard, standing sternly at the door. My foster mother patted my arm, young one, go ahead. Your biological father has come to pick you up. The bath brush in my hand slipped suddenly and fell into the foot washing basin, splashing water all over me. Sensing the disgust that flashed in his eyes, I hastily wiped my face. Who would have thought that the adopted daughter of the Xinyuan escort agency would become the estranged daughter of the Zachary family overnight? On the way back, I felt like I was in a dream, dazed and confused. As I entered the large gate, the spacious Zachary mansion appeared unusually desolate. As far as my eyes could see, not a single servant was in sight. Before I could ponder, a woman who claimed to be my mother rushed out from the inner courtyard, grabbed my hand, and burst into tears. I pursed my lips, feeling at a loss. Growing up in the escort agency, living a life on the edge, I was not accustomed to such emotional scenes. From her tearful words, I pieced together my own background. Eighteen years ago, the Zachary family gave birth to a pair of twins. Due to the wicked intentions of a nursemaid, the younger one was accidentally lost. Now, the elder twin, Adeline, had married into the palace and become the mother of the nation. As for me, I ended up in an unknown small escort agency, serving as a foot-washing maid. I raised my eyelashes slightly, a faint smile playing on my lips, as I explained, the escort agency is called Xinyuan Escort Agency, well known locally. The head of the family, Olivia, is my foster mother. Both she and my elder brother treat me as their own, never regarding me as a servant. Not regarding you as a servant, yet letting you serve her feet? Zachary waved his wide sleeves, quite impatient. Grew up in the lower class after all, with narrow vision. I opened my mouth to retort, but he swiftly interrupted me, enough. We're reunited as a family. Don't waste time on those irrelevant people. Let's go see your grandmother first. Before I could respond, he started walking, Lady Ho had already dried her tears, and she hurriedly followed, tugging at my wrist. I lowered my gaze, feeling a bit parched in my throat. Outside the old lady's courtyard, there was a dense crowd of servants, as if the entire Zachary Mansion staff had been summoned, giving off an inexplicable strangeness. Is this her? Come closer, let me have a look. 
I straightened up and approached, Ariana pays respects to grandma. The thin old lady with a white cloth on her forehead leaned against the bedpost, and in a cold tone, she said, raise your head. I raised my head as she instructed, allowing her scrutinizing gaze to sweep over me, like she was appraising an object. Though the face is the same, just a bit darker. The most distinct difference is the temperament. She turned her eyes away and clicked her tongue. A mountain chicken can't impersonate a phoenix. Mother, but what other choice do we have now? It's all because of that wicked girl, Lord Ho suddenly halted, breathing heavily through his nose, as if he might collapse the next second. My mother, seemingly made of water, began to sob again, but these tears, they didn't seem to be shed for me. The initial joy of reuniting with close relatives had already been diluted. I felt like a puppet on strings, present here, but utterly devoid of any sense of existence. Ariana. Here. I hastily snapped back to attention, starting to worry about the situation back at Xingyuan Escort Agency. They looked extremely displeased with me, and they might not want to acknowledge me again. Thinking of this, I surprisingly felt relieved. Your sister, who is the current queen due to the emperor's favor, was allowed to return home for a family visit five days ago, but... Dylan swallowed hard, looking somewhat uncomfortable, she was misled by a scoundrel, secretly left home, and we used your grandmother's illness to delay for a few days, but it's not a long-term solution. Like a thunderclap, shock spread through me, hard to conceal. Not because of the outrageous actions of my unknown sister, but because they revealed such a secret to me so easily. Weren't they afraid of leaks? After all, just the day before, we were still strangers. The crime of losing the mother of the nation deserves execution. He tightly grasped my eyes, our entire family will be buried, with no exceptions. Of course, that includes you, and even the escort agency that sheltered you secretly. So that's it. I wanted to laugh a little, but my lips wouldn't cooperate. Since you are a descendant of this family, you should contribute to the family, and regarding the people from the escort agency who kindly took you in, can you bear to see them die because of you? He was threatening me with the entire staff of the escort agency. The voices in my ears continued, and my heart grew colder inch by inch. They couldn't even wait until the next day, not bothering to pretend. What do you need me to do? I asked in a low voice. Dylan, satisfied, smoothed his long beard, you must help your sister, stand in that position. As siblings born from the same womb, you should both prosper together and suffer together. On the fifth day of my confinement in Finchi Palace, the Imperial Edict arrived. Your Majesty! I knew His Majesty wouldn't treat you like this. Skylar leaped up and rushed out before I could stop her. I could only silently follow her. My intuition told me that Skylar might be greatly disappointed. A shriveled eunuch held up the imperial edict, squinting at us. The queen has behaved improperly, opposing the emperor. She is ordered to reflect in seclusion, deprived of the phoenix seal. The affairs of the harem will temporarily be overseen by concubine Yao. Cicadas chirped in the courtyard, the heat lingering and the stagnant air providing no relief. I tilted my head, looking at the empty grape arbor to the west. This time last year, the saplings Eli and I planted together had now grown into lush greenery. However, there was no one to share the cool shade with me anymore. Don't delay any longer, the old eunuch huffed impatiently, making strange sounds. Your Majesty, quickly hand over the phoenix seal. How is this possible? Skylar widened her eyes, stumbling forward, grabbing the eunuch's sleeve. How can His Majesty treat the queen like this? He can't do this to you. In one night, everything changed, and it was difficult for even those around me to accept. You insolent servant. The old eunuch angrily flicked his sleeve. A mere palace maid dares to speak insolently, truly disrespectful. Skylar, I tried to pull her back. Smack. Before I could react, a nearby young eunuch viciously slapped Skylar, sending her sprawling to the ground. Why did you hit her? I raised my eyebrows sharply, glaring at the servant who usually bowed and scraped in front of me, my hands slowly clenching into fists. Now I am still the queen. Who gave you the courage to hit someone close to me? The young eunuch rolled his eyes and knelt down, this servant was just afraid this little palace maid didn't understand the rules, causing trouble for your majesty. I wanted to discipline her for your majesty's sake. He stretched out his arms, kowtowing to me lazily, please spare this servant's life, your majesty. I stared at him, the veins on the back of my hand bulging, then slowly subsiding. Anger without power was meaningless. Turning my gaze to Skylar, who was still trembling on the ground, I tossed the phoenix seal to the old eunuch. Take it. The courtyard fell silent, 
and the heavy palace doors creaked closed before my eyes. How could this happen? Skylar covered her eyes, his majesty clearly, loves you so much. When you smile, he smiles, when you frown, he panics. When you were ill, he personally served you soup for several days, wishing he could replace you. Even on the night you had nightmares, he went to Wuxing Mountain to pray for you. Are those past moments all fake? I don't believe it. My eyelashes trembled, and after a long time, I softly spoke, they were all real. The past favor was real, and the current coldness is also real. From that day on, Finchi Palace became like a cold and desolate place. All the attendants were evacuated, leaving only Skylar and me guarding the vast palace, waiting for the meager meals to be served three times a day. Even these hard-to-swallow meals were often delayed, sometimes even omitted. Skylar wanted to protest, but she couldn't even get out of the main gate. If His Majesty knew they were treating you like this, he would surely execute them and their entire families. Skylar angrily threw the cold buns on the ground. How do you know he is unaware? I picked them up and blew off the black dust that stuck to them. Finding such rock-hard food in the palace must be challenging for them. Little did he know that he was forcing me to yield. But what he didn't realize was that after years of the precarious life of the escort bureau, there was no hardship I hadn't endured. I just thought this time would be different, Skylar looked crestfallen. Your Majesty, you are such a kind person. Speaking out of turn, this servant has long regarded you as a sister. And His Majesty, how could he bear to treat you so coldly? Are all men in the world heartless? She glanced at me sneakily. The former queen, also enjoyed favor for a while. My hand paused, as if pricked by a needle, in the softest, most vulnerable place. I couldn't help but furrow my brow. But you're different. Skylar seemed frightened by my expression and hastily corrected herself. This servant has seen every little interaction between you and His Majesty. It surpasses the affection between ordinary couples. His Majesty only reveals that smile in front of you. Your Majesty must be the one he likes the most. I slowly raised my eyes. The one he likes the most, not the only one he likes. Skylar's mouth opened in surprise, stuttering, but he's the Emperor. How could the Emperor only like one person? The Emperor is also a human being, I stared at her steadily. Why can't one person only like one person? I only liked one person. From the moment I first saw him. Fingchi Palace fell silent for several days. Another imperial decree arrived, instructing me to personally present a painting in front of the Emperor. Following a young eunuch, I was led to the side of the lotus pond in the imperial garden. The water was calm, a gentle breeze brushed against the flowing white veil, revealing two entwined shadows in the pavilion. I stood frozen, as if my feet were weighted with a thousand pounds and couldn't move. Haven't you greeted His Majesty yet? Outside the pavilion, a maid of consort Yao glanced at me. The laughter inside the pavilion ceased, and I regained my senses, bending my knees to bow. This servant pays respects to His Majesty. Silence lingered for a while, and I kept my head bowed, maintaining my posture. This kind of ordeal was like an itch to me. Back in the escort bureau, I had the most stable horse stance among my peers. Come here. The cold voice echoed. The curtain was lifted, and consort Yao leaned against Eli, seated inside. The Empress has always enjoyed painting. Today, I summoned you here Eli stared directly at me, to paint a portrait for both me and the consort, right here, by the lotus pond. There was a moment of deafness. I slowly lifted my gaze, looking at him. How long had it been since I last saw him? The features were still familiar, but the expression was as cold as a stranger's. Consort Yao sneered, the originally serene Qingwu Pond, who knows who changed it to a lotus pond. How vulgar. I froze. The pond was originally called Qingwu Pond. Eli didn't like it. I once jokingly asked him if changing it to lotus pond would be better. Thinking of the fisherman in May. A small boat with light paddles, entering the lotus pool in a dream. He affectionately kissed the tip of my nose and said in a low voice, good. On the same pond bank, he held my hand, took a brush, and attempted to paint a lotus. But in the end, the painting was never completed, clothes were stained, and when our affection was at its peak, even a single flower was enough to occupy us for half the day. Consort Yao chuckled, looking at Eli, what does his majesty think? Eli diverted his gaze, indifferently saying, what consort said is correct, it's intolerably vulgar. I pursed my lips, silently lowering my eyelashes. Brushes, ink, paper, and ink stone were all in place, laid out in front of me, but I didn't move for a long time. A eunuch at my side raised his hand, your majesty, please. Is the empress unwilling? 
Eli's eyebrows suppressed his anger, and his black eyes harbored brewing wrath. Consort Yao's eyes wandered, disdainfully saying, Dylan repeatedly hinders his majesty's new policies in the court, and you go against his majesty's wishes in the harem. Truly deserving of being a family. Eli's complexion became even more unsightly, and the coldness between his brows couldn't be contained. This servant dares not. I replied. Then start painting. How long does the emperor have to wait for you? Eli lifted consort Yao, embraced her, and his long arms circled her slender waist, ambiguously disappearing into her garment. My pupils contracted, and I clenched my nails tightly into my palm. The thin needle emerged again, traversing my internal organs, suddenly puncturing my chest. Empty and desolate, a dense and unbearable pain surfaced. I raised the brush, trembling as it landed on the paper. Stroke by stroke, I outlined a pair of lovers. To kill the heart, it could only be this way. I lost. One drop, another drop. Like the reluctant drizzle after autumn. They splashed onto the painting paper, blurring the ink. What does the Empress mean by this? Consort Yao coldly asked, Do you feel wronged by the Emperor? Dylan's daughter is so noble, shedding tears even when drawing a portrait for the Emperor. She tugged at Eli's collar, Don't force the Empress anymore. Who knows, she might turn around and go home to complain. Eli's black eyes stared at me intensely, as if harboring deep resentment. I lifted my sleeve, wiped my eyes, and exhaled slowly. This servant has never been good at such elegant matters as painting. Doesn't the emperor know that best? True, Eli sneered, lips curled in mockery, since the elegant doesn't work, simplicity should. Just kneel to the side until the beloved consort cools down. A sour sensation rose in my nostrils, and the scene before me suddenly blurred. Your Majesty, thank you for your kindness. On the stone-paved path, I bent my knees and moved forward, the sharp stones pressing against them. It hurts, Eli. I blinked, tears rolling down, and his face once again reflected clearly in my pupils. As if it were the first time. Elegant and handsome. He walked casually to stand in front of me and spoke coldly, Does it hurt? Is it suffocating? When your father incited the ministers in the court to resist me, I felt the same way, Ariana. I just need a pretext to strip him of his power, not to take your family's life. By stepping forward and accusing him, the former glory of the Empress can be restored in a moment. Seeing my lack of reaction, Eli sighed, you're always like this, appearing soft, but once you've made up your mind, you're stubborn to death. Choose whether you want to be the Empress or Dylan's daughter, consider it carefully, and don't regret it for a lifetime. And what about Eli? I raised my face defiantly. He had said he was afraid, and at such times, he wanted to be called Eli. Is the one asking me a question right now the Emperor or Eli? Eli's eyebrows furrowed tightly. After a while, he lightly uttered a few words, I can only be the Emperor. I pursed my lips and slowly lowered my body. I understand. Eli could like Ariana, but not the Emperor. He stood on the high platform, overlooking all living beings, and all beings were no different. The Emperor's favor could never surpass imperial authority. No one could be an exception to him. By the side of the lotus pond, everyone dispersed, leaving only me kneeling there in a daze. Suddenly, the darkness overhead enveloped me, and as I looked up, I saw Skylar. A dimness flickered in my eyes. Let's go back, your majesty. Has he calmed down? Kneeling for too long, my response was slow. He wants me to kneel until they calm down. Skylar drooped her face, on the verge of tears. It's enough. Let's go back. That night, I developed a high fever. Sweating profusely, my body alternated between wet and dry, as if struggling in a hot soup, breathless, unable to distinguish day from night. In a daze, a familiar scent approached, cool and soothing, bringing a sense of peace. Instinctively, I hugged it tightly, feeling Cool Jade struggling. I pleaded softly, don't leave. Cool Jade quieted down, and after a while, pressed even closer. When I woke up again, it was deep into the night, and I couldn't tell which day it was. Unexpectedly, I met a pair of dark eyes, and Eli turned his gaze away. Silence lingered between us. I just came to see if you were dead or alive, his voice deliberately cold. I suddenly laughed. The smile reflected in his eyes, and his tense shoulders visibly relaxed, only his thin lips tightly pressed. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at myself, I licked my dry lips, self-righteous, self-deluded, thinking there was true affection between us. Deceiver, he sneered, his gaze suddenly sharp, a foot-washing maid dares to talk to me about sincerity. I froze abruptly, for a moment, murmured, so you knew everything. 
Eli, I grew up in a simple environment since childhood, surrounded by straightforward and simple people. We laughed when we were happy, cried when we were sad, expressed our likes and dislikes directly, and even fought if we didn't like something. I sniffed, even if the beginning was wrong, I was sincere from start to finish. Replace your empress who deceived you, it's Dylan's fault, I can't harm them. I'm willing to bear any other punishment, but I won't occupy the position of empress again. Eli suddenly swept the teacup off the table. What are you? Dare to negotiate with me. He coldly sneered, in my empire, the position of empress can't accommodate your family pushing back and forth. A sense of powerlessness overwhelmed me. I closed my eyes languidly. If the emperor calls me a deceiver, what about the emperor? Has he ever shown a moment of sincerity to me? Do you deserve it? I am the emperor, how could I have genuine feelings for a foot-washing maid? The room suddenly fell into silence, and even the sound of breathing became almost inaudible. After a long time, I spoke softly, Eli, I am not a clever person. When you said you liked me at the beginning, I believed you. Now that you say you don't like me, I will believe you for the last time. From today, I sever all ties with the emperor. The past friendship is gone, and we'll be strangers from now on. I'll return the position of empress to you. I watched as the light in his eyes gradually dimmed, revealing a hint of confusion, as if returning to that moment in the deep palace where no one comforted him to sleep. Abandoned, forgotten. I calmly averted my gaze. This version of him reminded me of the time when I pitted the emperor, how laughable it was. Hearts change, memories are silent. From the moment we made our choices, all warmth had already dissipated. Eli, from now on, let's forget the past and not mention the future. Stupid. Dylan clutched his chest, angrily pointing at my forehead. Do you think he's a poor victim kept in the dark? The ones deceived are our family. The person conspiring with your sister is arranged by the emperor himself, everything is his plan. How could he? I was stunned. She is his wife, how could he? That shows how ruthless he is. Dylan said bitterly. Not satisfied with me hindering him in court, he's willing to sacrifice even his own bedside companion. First, he showered her with favor, then deliberately neglected her. When your sister became mentally unstable, he sent in a man who cared for her, all in a plot to deceive your sister into eloping. Even the provincial visit was a deliberate opportunity for your sister to elope. With the empress absent, our family couldn't escape blame, and he could easily get rid of me. He stroked his beard, snorting. But he didn't expect that we still have you. Now that we've found your sister, all that's left is for each of you to go your own way. He can't harm our family anymore. I stared at him, still processing the impact of his words. Growing up in the escort agency, surrounded by honest and straightforward people, I had never encountered such twisted schemes. It turned out the real fool was me alone. Lowering my eyes, I asked him softly, going our own way means I won't return to the palace? Can I go back to the escort agency then? Ariana, Dylan lowered his voice, are you resentful of your father? That's why you don't even want to stay in the Marquis 8. I looked up at him, silver hair framing his face, and his gaze falling on me with affection. You're still my daughter, blood is thicker than water. A tender warmth filled my heart, and I bit my lip to hold back the tears, silent for a while. Although the Emperor allows you to return home to recuperate, there are hidden guards everywhere. Fortunately, I've arranged everything. He took out a porcelain bottle. These are calming pills, taking them will temporarily close your senses. When your sister returns to the palace, you can return home. Eat it. He affectionately touched my head, offering the paternal love I had longed for since childhood. Take it, and you can go home. This is the first time I've seen my sister, Adeline. No wonder everyone loves her. We share the same facial features, but her eyes and brows are full of vitality and depth. Unlike me, who looks stiff, she appears to be a pampered lady who has grown up in comfort, an exceptionally dazzling woman. In the temporary room where I reside, Adeline leisurely strolls, her gaze scanning the surroundings, stopping at a stack of paintings. What's this? I pressed my lips together, silent. Skylar stepped forward and, with a hoarse voice, replied, These are paintings that the mistress and the emperor made together in the palace. Mistress? Adeline raised an eyebrow, her gaze bypassing me and landing on Skylar. You still call her mistress? The servant deserves death, it's the second miss, Skylar knelt down, biting her lower lip tightly. Actually, the second miss doesn't want to take the position of the empress. Joke, does she have the intention to take it? Adeline casually glanced over, picking up her long nails. The emperor just mistook someone for me. Don't be delusional. 
I replied softly, I won't. I won't be delusional again. Adeline opened the window, gazing into the distance at the Imperial City. She sighed suddenly, my silly sister. You don't really think he can recognize, do you? Women are always like this, thinking the other person feels the same, but it's just wishful thinking. Love for him is as light as a feather, discardable at any moment. Even if we switch places several times, he won't recognize. Don't believe it. Just watch at the Marquisite's gate when the time comes. In truth, I believed, so I didn't really want to go, but I couldn't resist Skylar's insistence. It seemed she had some kind of fixation on the feelings between me and Eli. On the way to the Zachary mansion, I wore a veil that reached my ankles to conceal my appearance. At the end of the long street was the Victory Escort Agency. From a distance, it seemed there were white morning banners hanging at the door, and scattered Joss paper on the steps. I felt a pang in my heart, as if I had forgotten something. About to go over, the street suddenly erupted into excitement. People were running around, saying that the imperial carriage had come to the Zachary mansion to personally pick up the empress and bring her back to the palace. Indeed, the emperor and empress's affection was genuine. Skylar, with red eyes, bowed her head and murmured to herself, he's picking up the empress, you, not her. I smiled wryly and shook my head. Even though there were armed guards with weapons and loud shouts, people still flocked, eager to catch a glimpse of the emperor and empress's true appearance. I, along with Skylar, was swept along by the crowd and squeezed through. After a long time, the gates of the Zachary mansion opened. They're coming out. They're coming out. Everyone knelt down in a clamor. I followed suit and finally couldn't resist, lifting my eyes. A pair of imperial couple walked out, hand in hand. In the short distance, they exchanged glances several times, and their eyes revealed emotions that couldn't be hidden. It was true, he couldn't tell the difference between Adeline and Ariana from beginning to end. This should be our last meeting. Suddenly, Eli's gaze looked over through the crowd. I was startled and quickly lowered my head, beads of sweat forming on my back. I didn't know how much time passed, and the eunuch's long voice echoed through the street, the imperial carriage set off. I forced a smile, turned around, and said to Skylar, his gaze is indeed quite blind. I won't like him anymore in the future. For some reason, Skylar didn't respond to me, just staring blankly at the departing imperial carriage. I patted her shoulder, wanting to reassure her that I was fine. Among the brothers at the Victory Escort Agency, the ones who liked me would form a three-mile-long queue. But when I opened my mouth, my throat choked, and I couldn't make a sound. I thought I would cry. I touched the corner of my eyes, but they were dry, not a single tear could be squeezed out. It was Skylar who cried. Holding her face, she sobbed uncontrollably. With everything settled, I decided to return to the Victory Escort Agency. Neither the Zachary Mansion nor the Palace belonged to me. Only at the Victory Escort Agency could I freely demonstrate my skills, live carefree like a bird in the sky, or a fish in the water. As for Skylar's decision to stay or leave I respected her choice. After packing my belongings, I went to find Skylar, only to see her carrying a bundle and leaving alone. I was surprised and subconsciously followed her. She walked with a heavy heart all the way, not noticing my presence. It wasn't until she reached the entrance of the Victory Escort Agency that she stopped for a moment before entering. Doubts arose in my chest, and I couldn't help but quicken my pace. Stepping into the main hall of the Escort Agency, I suddenly froze. Olivia, my foster mother, sat at the top. Her once straight shoulders slumped, and the fierce and spirited look on her face was nowhere to be seen. I stared in astonishment, greedily tracing her face with my eyes, full of affection. Mother, I'm back. She looked at the direction where I stood motionless. Mother. My gaze slowly moved, suddenly freezing on the wooden tablet placed on the hall, and my pupils contracted sharply. I rushed forward in disbelief, wanting to see the words on the tablet clearly. Noble spirit of beloved daughter Ani. Ani was the name my mother later gave me. She didn't like Ariana and scoffed, saying, being Olivia's daughter doesn't require her to carry herself with affectionate care. Being safe and happy is enough. I tried to pick up the tablet, but my hand passed through it. Bang! A loud noise. My mother fiercely clenched her fist on the table, a family that dines together, like wild wolves and leopards. I thought they were sending my son to enjoy life, but I didn't expect it to cost my daughter's life. It's my fault. I shouldn't have sent my son to that den of wolves. She was naturally gentle, an exceptionally kind child. She would give everything to others for a small favor, but how could she contend with those scheming individuals? If I had known, 
My mother looked towards the door, I would have tied her up here. Although my son is useless, he would have cherished her for a lifetime and dared not mistreat her even a little. A tall man stood silently at the door. It was my stepbrother Parker, who had grown up with me in innocence. If it weren't for Eli, I might have married him, and we would have had a bunch of little Parkers and little Agnes. Unfortunately, I was already dead. No wonder my sister's gaze never fell on me from beginning to end. No wonder she always avoided me and only spoke to Skylar. Skylar believed in Eli's deep love for me, and she asked Skylar to witness it firsthand. The so-called sincerity of men is so shallow. But why did I have to die? My brain suddenly throbbed sharply, and I clutched my head tightly, trying to resist the blood that was surging inside. It was the medicine from that bottle. In that moment of realization, I wanted to burst into laughter, laughing at my fleeting happiness, which turned out to be false. My biological father. The only time he showed affection was to make sure I willingly went to my death. A dead person would never pose a threat to him. Blood is thicker than water. I'm also a daughter of this family, so why treat me so cruelly? The old scoundrel will face retribution sooner or later. Mother held my memorial tablet close to her chest, gently caressing it. Let's wait and see. Skylar has only one thing unclear, Skylar stood up, wiping her eyes. Why, when Miss went missing, could they immediately find Miss to take her place? And why is everything so coincidental? Of course, it's not a coincidence, Mother sneered, a burst of coldness in her eyes. All those excuses about the wet nurse losing her are just the wolf's cover-up and deception. I thought he regretted it now, wanting to rebuild a relationship with my son, so I didn't expose it. Twins have always been considered ominous. He deliberately abandoned my son because of the uncertain fate that awaited him. Mother's eyes showed a blood-red color, and she gritted her teeth. Do you know why he left him at the door of my escort agency? Skylar shook her head dumbly. Because it's easier to die, Mother whispered in despair. It's easier to lose your life while making a living at the escort agency. I only found out recently when I found that wet nurse. My poor child, her biological parents were hoping for her death every day. Skylar covered her face and knelt on the ground. So that's how it is. I took a deep breath and closed my eyes heavily. In this world, I once drifted like a floating weed. Fortunately, my foster mother and stepbrother gave me a home, and I knew I was lucky enough. Later, I gained biological parents and Eli. I thought it was a gift from fate, a reward. But it turned out to be like a mirage. When the wind blew, it revealed the dirty mud at the bottom of the water. My birth had never been blessed. I was an arrival not anticipated. I swung my legs, sitting on the beam in the hall of diligent governance, swaying on the swing. Eli erupted in anger again. The papers were scattered on the floor, and the broken teacups splashed ink on the paper, staining the ink marks. I could vaguely recognize that my surname was on it. For some reason, after realizing the fact of my death, my soul was trapped in Eli's vicinity. In my childhood, I heard the old folks say that a soul with lingering attachments would stay close to those involved in its karma. Did I still have lingering attachments to Eli? How could that be? Even my mother praised me for being open-minded. Thinking of my mother, my mind drifted further away. In her youth, my mother injured her leg while working as a bodyguard and needed to use a medicinal bath every day. I was always worried about others, so I learned a set of massage techniques from a doctor and personally helped my mother with her medicinal bath and massage. When I first met Dylan, he mistook me for a footman. How absurd. How could others know the loving and caring heart my mother had for me? I was willing to wash and massage my mother's feet every day just to alleviate her pain by a fraction. I don't know how many summers and winters have passed, I can't remember. All I know is that by then, Eli had firmly secured the dragon throne. Dylan, on the other hand, had suffered several demotions and was now a commoner. The once glorious Dylan residence had declined, and he couldn't accept such a fall. He attempted suicide several times but was saved by the palace guards. If Eli didn't let him die, he couldn't die. Their empress naturally changed her position, moving into the cold palace, endlessly laundering the dirty clothes of the palace servants day and night. I once went with Eli to see her. Despite her predicament, my sister still held her head high. You won't find her. She left long ago, and by now, she's probably already given birth to a bunch of children. Shut up. Eli ruthlessly grabbed her neck. I won't be fooled by you. I will find her. You are deaf and blind. Even if you find her, so what? My sister desperately struggled against his grip, her eyes wide open. You won't recognize her, and she has long hated you. 
She will never forgive you, let alone return to your side. Of course, I recognize my Ariana. The reasons will be explained to her in the future, and it has nothing to do with you. Eli shook off her hand with disgust. As for you people who treated her poorly, the one who should atone the most is you. My sister, with swollen hands covering her neck, hatred overflowed from her eyes. She fell for you, and the one who hurt her the most is you. Eli rolled up his sleeves, lightly patting off the dust, as if he had touched something dirty. When I find Ariana again, I will atone for my sins. You don't need to worry about it. My sister opened her mouth as if she wanted to say something. In an instant, she smiled maliciously. I will watch the day you learn the truth with my own eyes. Their struggle bored me immensely. I looked up at the sky, watching the geese flying overhead, not knowing when I could return home. I longed for my mother. Another year passed, and in the ninth month, Dylan finally couldn't hold on any longer. After months of lingering on the sickbed, he passed away. Eli, on the other hand, finally found Skylar, who was living in a remote mountainous area. Seeing Skylar again filled me with joy. She wore a married woman's hair bun, with rosy cheeks, obviously living well. I felt much more at ease. Knowing the truth of my death from Skylar, Eli sat alone on the dragon throne all night. The next day, he went alone to the Phoenix Perch Palace. The palace had been empty for a long time, but it was meticulously maintained inside, preserving the appearance from when I left. I followed his gaze and looked at the grape arbor in the courtyard. Bare and lifeless, even the withered would struggle to survive. In this world, everything might not go as you wish, even if you are extremely noble. Eli fell into silence and entered the room. I followed behind him, watching as he aimlessly wandered around the hall in circles. Finally, he closed his eyes and lay down on the bed, his hands neatly folded on his abdomen. Feeling tired as well, I mimicked his posture and lay down beside him. After a while, he suddenly spoke, I've recognized you. I abruptly opened my eyes. You are different from her. She doesn't have your clear eyes, Eli looked vacantly, gazing at the canopy, and spoke softly, every time before, I always recognized it. The first time I saw you, you were like a little sparrow, afraid on the surface, but your eyes were more curious than fearful, he gently curved his lips, lost in memories, I knew something was wrong at a glance, either someone changed, or your mind was messed up. I whispered, you're the one with a messed up mind. I pretended and played along, because of certain unavoidable reasons. I thought we would have a future. You just had to wait a bit longer, and I would explain it to you, he choked suddenly, Dylan was strong, and the Yao family controlled military power. I was afraid, afraid of not being able to protect you. He paused, suddenly choking up, why didn't you wait a little longer for me? Clearly, it was almost dawn. For the first time in my life, I fell in love, but I got scared, retreated. Destined to be a lonely person, how could I dare to feel true affection? It's not that you are undeserving, it's that I am undeserving. You are unique, Ariana. I've never regarded you as anyone else, nor have I regarded anyone else as you. Eli closed his eyes, tears wetting the fine lines at the corners of his eyes. Turns out, he had also aged. This was the first time I saw him cry. Intrigued, I wanted to touch the tears of the emperor, but they had a warmth to them. As I reached out, I noticed my soul gradually becoming transparent. My body suddenly felt lighter, the previous sense of confinement disappeared. Suddenly aware that I could leave, in the blink of an eye, I stood in a familiar place. Tightening the bundle on my back, I walked briskly towards home. The door of the Victorious Darts Bureau was pushed open. Mother, I'm back. The small figure disappeared behind the door, and with a creak, the door closed again.